All right, let's dive right in and we're going to go to Manage Azure Identities and Governance. In this first part, we will look at how to interpret access assignments. There's several different things you can look at in the Identity and Access Management Blade. So one of the first things we have is the Check Access feature. With this, you can view the access of a user or another security principal that has access to Azure resources. However, sometimes you need to quickly view the access for a single user or another security principal. And using this feature, the Check Access, is the fastest way to do that. If you want to determine what resources users, groups, service principals, or managed identities have access to, you can use the Role Assignments, which is the next tab over from the Check Access button. Once you do that, you'll see a list of the roles assigned to the selected user group at various scopes, such as Management Group, Subscription, Resource Group, or Resource. This list includes all resource assignments that you have permission to read. Similar to a role assignment, there is now a deny assignment that attaches a set of deny actions to a user group or service principal at a particular scope for the purpose of denying access. Deny assignments block users from performing specific Azure resource actions, even if a role assignment grants them access. But note this, Azure Blueprints and Azure Managed Apps use deny assignments to protect system managed resources. Currently, Azure Blueprints and Azure Managed Apps are the only way that the deny assignments can be created. You can't create them directly from your own deny assignments. In Azure Active Directory, each Azure AD organization is fully independent, a peer that is logically independent from the other Azure AD organizations that you manage. This independence between organizations includes resource independence, administrative independence, and synchronization independence. There is no parent-child relationship between the organizations. So let's talk about resource independence. If you create or delete an Azure AD resource in one organization, it has no impact on any resource in another organization with the partial exception of external users. If you register one of your domain names with one organization, it can't be used by another organization. Let's talk about administrative independence. If a non-administrative user of an organization, for example, Contoso, creates a test organization called Test, then by default, the user who creates an organization is added as an external user in that new organization and assigned the global administrator role in that organization. The administrators of organization Contoso have no direct administrative privileges to organization test unless an administrator of test specifically grants them these privileges. However, administrators of Contoso can control access to organization test if they control the user account that created test. If you add or remove an Azure AD role for an organization in one organization, the change does not affect the roles that the user is assigned in any other Azure AD organization. Creating a custom role. If the Azure built-in roles don't meet the specific needs of your organization, you can create your own custom roles. Just like built-in roles, you can then assign custom roles to users, groups, and service principles at the scopes of management group, subscription, and resource groups. Custom roles can be shared between subscriptions that trust the same Azure Active Directory. There is a limit of 5,000 custom roles per directory. Custom roles can be created using the Azure Portal, Azure PowerShell, Azure CLI, or the REST API. Wildcard permissions include actions, not actions, data actions, and not data actions to define permissions. A wildcard extends a permission to everything that matches the action string you provide. For example, suppose you wanted to add all the permissions related to Azure cost management and exports. You can also have multiple wildcards in a string. For example, you could have 
Microsoft.costmanagement slash star slash query slash star. These are the steps to create a custom role. First of all, to create a custom role, you decide how you want to create the custom role. You can, then number two, you can create custom roles using all the methods we talked about, the portal, PowerShell, Azure CLI, or REST API. You then determine the permissions you need. When you create a custom role, you need to know the operations that are available to define your permissions. You will add the operations to the actions or not actions properties of the role definition. If you have data operations, you will add those to the data actions or not data action properties. Then you create the custom role and typically you will start with a, an existing built-in role and then modify it for your needs. That is the easiest way to do it. And you can do this now from the Azure portal. Finally, you test the custom role. And once you have your custom role um, and you've tested and verified it works as expected, then you can make adjustments as needed based on your user requirements. Cost management. So we've talked about scopes and scopes apply in cost management, which is where you manage billing data. We can have roles specific to payments, view invoices, and conduct general account management. Billing and account roles are managed separately from roles used for resource management, which use Azure RBAC. To clearly distinguish the intent of separate scopes, including access control differences, they're referred to as billing scopes and Azure RBAC scopes, respectively. We can use tags, which are an effective way to understand costs that span multiple teams and Azure scopes. For example, you might have a resource like an email server that many teams use. You can put a shared resource like the email server in a subscription that's dedicated to shared resources or put it in an existing subscription. If you put it in an existing subscription, the subscription owner might not want its cost to accrue to the same team every month. For this example, you can use a tag to identify the resources as being shared. Using cost analysis, cost analysis allows you to analyze your organizational costs in depth by slicing and dicing your costs using standard resource properties. Consider the following common questions as you guide your analysis. Answering these questions on a regular basis will help you stay more informed and enable more cost conscious decisions. What are the estimated costs for the current month? Do we want to investigate anomalies, do routine checks? Is my latest invoice cost more than the previous month? For chargebacks, now that I know how much I'm being charged, how should those charges be broken down for my organization. Here's a pro tip for you. Consider creating dev test subscriptions for your development environment to take advantage of reduced pricing. If the workload spans multiple teams or Azure scopes, consider using tags to identify them. Configuring management groups. When any user starts management groups, there's an initial setup process that happens. The first step is the root management group, which is created in the directory. Once this group is created, all existing subscriptions that exist in the directory are made children of the root management group. The reason for this process is to make sure there's only one management group hierarchy within a directory. The single hierarchy within the directory allows administrative customers to apply global access and policies that other customers within the directory can't bypass. Management group access. Um, Azure management groups support Azure role-based access control for all resource access and role definition. These permissions are inherited to child resources that exist in the hierarchy. Azure custom role definition and assignment. Azure custom role support for management groups is currently in preview with some limitations. So consider that for the exam. Previews often are not on the exam. To move a management group or subscription to be a child of another management group, three rules need to be evaluated as true. If you're doing the move, you need management group right and role assignment right permissions on the child subscription or management group. A built-in role example would be owner. Management group right access on the target parent management group. Some examples would be owner, contributor, management group, contributor. And third, management group right access on the existing parent management group. Again, examples, owner, contributor, or management group contributor. Finally, you can audit these management groups using activity logs. Management groups are supported within Azure Activity Log. 
you can search all events that happen to a management group in the same central location as other Azure resources. For example, you can see all role assignments or policy assignments changes made to a particular management group.